Just yesterday, a family's serene vacation in the Bahamas turned tragic with the news of a fatal shark attack involving Lauren Erickson Van Wart, a 44-year-old woman from Massachusetts. It's heartbreaking. It really is. I mean, these poor people, they probably look forward to this vacation for months. Now, this latest incident, it occurred near the Sandals Royal Bohemian Resort in New Providence. Now, this is a location renowned for its picturesque beaches, tranquil waters, and diverse marine ecosystem. The waters around it are home to a variety of shark species. Now, among these species are the nurse shark, which are generally known for their docile nature, and the reef shark, which is commonly found in shallow waters. But the thing is that these waters are also inhabited by larger species like the bull shark and the tiger shark, which of course, as we've covered in different episodes, uh, just as of the most recent one as well, these species especially, they're notorious for their potential to be dangerous to humans. And of course, it's also worth noting that the presence of the majestic but formidable great white shark, although less commonly sighted in these warmer waters, cannot be entirely ruled out. Now what you're about to hear are details from investigative reports based on key information from a lifeguard who was present at the scene during the time of the attack and would also happen to witness it. Now in the early hours of Monday, December 4th, 2023, Lauren, along with a male relative of hers, were paddleboarding about a mile off the coast of the beach at the aforementioned Sandals Royal Bohemian Resort. Now as they navigated the gentle waves, Lauren abruptly decided to drift away from her companion, perhaps seeking a moment of solitude or maybe a different view. Now this subtle shift in distance, seemingly inconsequential at the time, like the attack that happened in Streaky Bay, Australia, where a surfer named Todd Gendel was presumably eaten whole after he'd separated from his group while surfing just off the coast of the bay. I'll leave that episode for you at the end screen of this video in case you haven't seen it yet. And South Australia, in fact, has been seeing an increase in the number of attacks, even though that part of Australia is not really known for shark attacks as much as, say, the west or the northern parts of Australia are. An unassuming and now pretty much isolated Lauren was at this point struck by what the lifeguard on duty later described to be a massive shark from below, knocking her off her paddleboard and going on to inflict severe bites to her lower torso, resulting in massive bleeding and quickly turning the water around her blood red. The lifeguard, who'd been frozen in shock by what he was seeing, would then snap into action and hop on a rescue boat and rush towards Lauren, where he'd then rapidly bring her onto the boat and attempt to administer CPR but tragically, Lauren's injuries were fatal and she'd already succumbed to her wounds. In response to the horrifying incident, the Royal Bahamas Police Force and the resort's emergency team quickly went on to secure the beach and halt all water activities. Now this event has brought even more attention to a sudden recent spike in shark attacks in the Bahamas, which of course is a very famous spot, I'm sure it's not the first time y'all have heard of it, and it's a place otherwise not known for seeing many of them. It's very rare, it's obviously a tragedy whenever it happens. Bahamas is a very sharky place in general. It's been a shark sanctuary now for over a decade. Bahamas isn't typically a place where you see a lot of white sharks, which would be feeding on seals at the surface. Activities at the surface can be riskier because you're not actually able to see in the water as well and see what's swimming underneath. But there's there's nothing particularly dangerous about paddleboarding in the Bahamas at all. It's just a real fluke incident. In fact, they're so rare here that according to the International Shark Attack File, a database which tracks these occurrences on a global scale, there have been approximately just 33 confirmed unprovoked shark attacks in the Bahamas since 1580. It's also highly worth mentioning that in the past year, the Bahamas has seen an uptick in the total number of shark attacks that have been reported, especially in comparison to its historical numbers. During this time, the Bahamas has witnessed three major shark attacks, two of which were fatal. Just weeks prior to Lauren's encounter, a German tourist who'd been on a diving expedition was reported to have disappeared following a shark encounter, and despite strong search efforts, was tragically never found, and authorities would conclude that he was assumed to have been predated on during the encounter. And not to mention in June, another harrowing attack occurred when a scuba diving woman from Iowa suffered severe injuries in an attack, resulting in the amputation of her leg. And then finally another fatal incident last year, where an American tourist was tragically killed by a shark while snorkeling. Now these incidents, occurring in quick succession over the past year, have brought to light the increasing frequency of shark attacks in the Bahamas, especially given the uptick in recent incidents. It's also worth noting that the Bahamas has established its waters as a shark sanctuary, enforcing a ban on shark hunting. And this environmental initiative, although for a noble cause, has resulted in more of a population of sharks and thus an increased presence of them in the region, which of course increases the risks of attacks. Dr. Gavin Naylor, who leads the Florida Program of Shark Research at the University of Florida, notes that based on existing knowledge of shark behavior, 
An attack on a paddleboarder, especially a fatal one, as opposed to a surfer, was most certainly something out of the ordinary. In response to the attacks over the last year, local authorities, along with marine experts, have been working to enhance safety guidelines and educate visitors on best practices while engaging in water activities. The goal is to preserve the natural beauty as well as the appeal for tourists of the Bahamas, while ensuring that the safety and the well-being of everyone who enter its waters are their number one priority. Now you're looking at 1 in 10 to 13 million are the odds of an interaction with a shark. So when you think about the millions of people that are in the water around the world each day and the millions of sharks that are in the water, it's statistically highly, highly unlikely. When different types of life are coming together, you see birds in the water and multiple different game fish and then maybe a dolphin. And that is where you don't want to be because sharks are going to be on that. I would like to add that lastly, while the specific species of the culprit shark in Lauren's tragic incident has yet to be identified, based on the lifeguard's description that it was a massive shark, and given the largest of the aforementioned species of sharks that inhabit this area, the shark was likely in my opinion a tiger shark, or although it's less likely given these waters, a great white. So I will keep you guys updated in the community tab of what the culprit species was in regards to this specific attack. And finally, before ending the video, I would like to thank all our patrons and everyone who watches our videos on YouTube as well as Rumble. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate your support and I just wanted to thank you. Y'all know who you are. I'm not gonna publicize your names here just for privacy reasons, but do know that your support does not go unnoticed and every ounce of it is appreciated. Once again, before I yap on, this incident was tragic. Rest in peace to Lauren and my condolences go out to the Van Wart family for the tragedy they've been forced to endure. This is Animal L. Stay safe out there. Till next time.